In this video, we are going to lock the player input so that we can't run around in the background. Uh, the player can't accidentally trigger things before they're supposed to. All right, so up to this point, you should be able to play it and uh, we should be able to get to the player. You'll see your opening. <laughs> that's not centered. That's bothering me a little bit, but uh, whatever. Okay. Then we'll jump down to the player and the player can move around. But the problem is I could have moved in the background that whole time, but you should be this far. Now, inside of your blueprints, the way to set this up is honestly just going to require a lot of blueprint nodes. That's the nature of blueprints. <clears throat> um, and I'll also mention that there's probably a few either better or more optimized ways to do this. But I don't want to confuse the example with, you know, pulling lots of variables and you're not sure where things are. Like I'd rather make this as straightforward as possible. So when we play our cutscene, think about what we want to do. We want to start playing the cutscene. As soon as it starts playing, we want to disable input. Um, you know, maybe we even want to disable input up here. Let, hey, you know what? Let's disable input at default. I think that would be best, right? So before setup UI, there is a node called disable input. So I'm going to pull off of begin play and say the very first thing that I want to happen is to disable input. Okay. So uh, disable input. Um, now, what do we want to disable the input for? Because potentially we could have multiple players and, and whatever. So it's, it's really just looking for a player controller um, to disable input for. So um, I'm going to give it player control, Oop. player controller, get, get player controller. Here we go. Uh, yeah, right here. I, I'm always used to just dragging in both of these. I'm not entirely sure if both are necessary, but I'm just going to pull it in there anyways, just because I'd prefer to give it everything it needs. Uh, I'm also going to give it the player character. So get player character and make sure both are locked. Okay. Uh, yeah, that should be good. Now, the problem now is if, if we play it, we're disabling our input, um, but we're never <laughs> enabling it. So I shouldn't be able to move. If you try clicking around your keyboard, so that's good. Problem is, whenever the cutscene ends, I can still no longer move. So what we want to do is you want to re-enable the input as soon as the cutscene is done. Now it's it's not quite that tricky, like or not quite that easy. I don't want to necessarily keyframe or animate the input coming back in. I want a way to say when inside of blueprints, when the when the animation is done, re-enable um, input. Now I could do the same thing I did, did right here, right? Like I could say delay, then put in the length of the animation and then say re-enable input. But that, like I said earlier, that is kind of a hacky way to do it. And uh, you know, sometimes it's fine and I, I do wanna show you both methods, but sometimes I would just say, hey, just however long the animation is, then um, that once it's done, just re-enable the input. So to do that, we're gonna come down here. This is where we start playing our cutscene. We're already locked in our input. And what I want to do is I'm gonna do something called set timer by event. Set timer by event. And what this is doing, this is going to allow us to put in a, um, declare an amount of time to wait and then call an event once it's done. So an event is kind of weird, um, but you'll see this little red node right here, um, a function, so a function or a custom event or whatever you want to call it, we can call something like this from this pull off node. And what this is saying is after this amount of time, so if we put in 10 seconds, it will call this event. Now that's pretty cool. So I'm going to create a new custom event, add custom event. I'm just going to call this one um, intro end. Uh, actually, let's call this intro cutscene end, just to be really clear. And what I can do now is if I drag this right here, this event, you'll see it'll connect. This will run 
whenever this timer is over with. So, you know, we could just say uh, after, what is it? Three seconds after the cutscene starts. We could say after three seconds, um, pull off of here and say enable input. Then we could uh, drag in, you know, I'm just gonna copy paste these from up here. Give it just like before character and our controller and if we you know if we guess right here then this would be the hacky way to do it we could um we could just play that i mean the hackier way to do it would just be to connect off there but maybe we want other stuff um you know you you could delay or whatever you want to do but i think this is another way that i want to show you how to do this so if i were to come back here it should wait for three seconds after this cutscene starts and then re-enable input so technically this will work. Right, I can't move. So technically this will work and you know if that's all you care about then you'll be fine. But in my case, I don't want to manually set this amount right here. I want this to be driven by the length of the animation. Um, now the only trick here is to make sure that if your animation length is really long inside of your actual animation, it's just gonna wait until this whole thing is done. So if you have a lot of dead space at the end of this, it's just gonna keep playing and you're never gonna get your input back. So make sure that your animation length is trimmed properly, um, just like we did before. <clears throat> and um, so we want, we want to dynamically grab this. Now, one way we can do it is we can say, get the sequence player. I'm gonna pull off of that. And we can say something called get duration. Um, I I'm not sure which one we need. I think we can just do that. Get duration because we're already uh, pulling from the sequence player. So as long as you pull off that node, you should be able to type it in. Sometimes if you don't see a particular function, uh, you may need to pull off of a particular thing that has access to it, and then you will be able to see it. Um, so just be aware of that. Sometimes you have to search for it in here, and sometimes you need to pull off the connecting thing. Okay, get, get the duration. Um, let's see here. Uh, you can try connecting this right here. Now, this is actually looking for time. So float time, how long to wait. You could just try to connect this directly and I believe it will probably convert it. Yeah, converted to qualified frame time structure. So this is, I believe in case we pause it or something, um, it, it needs to convert it. It needs a certain type of um, input. So we'll just, let it convert and that'll be fine. So we're getting the duration, we're converting it to whatever it needs. So now as soon as we play, we are um, setting the timer by event and saying when this is done, meaning whatever the duration is, when this is done, call intro cutscene end. And actually I believe, I believe that's it. I believe this will do it for us. So uh, we're just dynamically getting in the time rather than setting it into this field right here. So as long as our animation clip, the, as long as the end time, right, like this red bar here, as long as this is not pulled off into infinity and this is properly clipped, whenever this marker hits that red bar, it's going to move on. Um, so let's actually test this out. <clears throat> let's go try to move around, try to test my input. Nope, nope, nope. All right, um, so you see another thing that happened right there. Uh, let's actually go in here. If you wanna test and see what happens, you can actually come up here in your blueprints. Uh, and if you hit play, you can follow the, you can follow the flow. Set timer by event, <clears throat> calling that enable input. So it looks like what happened is, um, I actually think I know what happened. My sequencer, um, because we have this selected and we're you know inside of this right here, I think that's propagating into the field view. So let's try this one more time. Uh, make sure that you're not, uh, I mentioned this before, this can be kind of a hang up. Um, make sure that you move back over here. And I think this will work. If it's something else, we'll just have to test it. It's just based off of if you have something selected. Ah, oh, we had a little hiccup there. But we actually have our input back. Uh, what was our hiccup? Um, maybe we're jumping to this a little too early. So um, 
maybe this is where our little blueprints blueprints class oh sorry um level blueprint that's what i'm looking for maybe that's where our little hacky number is uh not quite doing what we want oh are we in oh yeah we're in play mode sorry stop um so now we have to hack it a little bit right so we have to say well you know that switched too soon let's try um 6.8 and i don't know why i did that but let's try that Again, make sure. And you know, to prevent this, I'm just not I'm just gonna not select all that. And so we should just see our actual camera. So the view. Don't have anything selected. All right, so I think that's working pretty well for us. So we're gonna show you a few different methods on how to get that working and also sh how to show you um, how to make an intro cutscene and maybe throw in some UI elements. I was looking to do something very specific, but you could definitely expand this into other things. Like if you wanted a cutscene for when you enter this trigger volume and you wanna to hop to a different camera, um, you know, play a door opening, have a monster jump out or something, you could definitely expand the level sequence and animate other things and then make sure you return it to the camera. You can do more fade tracks uh, if you want. So I hope this is a good starting point for understanding how to trigger animated sequences inside of Unreal.